Good evening, everyone. My name is Bernard Canna. I'm the photographer and editor of the website known as The Photo Pit. We are here once again doing another series of interviews with our Blue Ridge Rock Festival Rising Talent. Uh, we have two members of a band here today that will be performing over at the Blue Ridge Rock Festival that takes place from September the 9th to September the 12th. So I want to introduce everyone to Cameron and Francesca from the band Fate Destroyed. How are you both doing tonight? Hi, doing Good great. Day. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, let's start off with, you know, the basic stuff about, about Fate Destroyed. Tell me, how long have you guys been active? So uh, the band started off as sort of a one-off project in like 2016. It was under a different name, but we didn't really get serious until about 2018. And that's when we put out our single Break Free and our first music video. And we started like solidifying a lineup and playing shows. So um, I'd say we've been active the, in, since like 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is the lineup that's, so who else, let me ask this. Who else are we missing today from the group? <laughs> Nobody, it's just a two-person group. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just me and a drummer, all right? There you go. Like like <laughs> Since our other band members are not here today. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, Cameron is our drummer. I am the front person. Um, we have Roger Bolin, who is our guitar player, and then Johnny Law, who is our other guitar player. Um, and that is, that's it for now. Yeah, we're okay. flying, so we're flying without a bass player right now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but hopefully you'll have, have one sorry. before Blue Ridge comes around or just All right. put yeah. some tracking on it. Yeah, a lot of bands, a lot of really high level bands actually tour without any bass player at all. Bands like, I think Architects does. Um, there's Periphery, I think does. There are a couple of bands that yeah. are rocking well, it without. Volumes. Yeah, volumes does so there are plenty of bands out there that are so don't feel sorry for us we're good okay that's good <laughs> it's good and interesting is just as you joked and said you know we're just the duo like i actually know groups who you know there's a number of groups that do just duo and one of them i know here local is uh is just a bassist he does bass vocal and a drummer which i thought was an interesting mix but, one, of my one of my favorite well not favorite but um oh goodness there's a band called royal blood they're um I, know also, that. I think that yeah they're a duo i think yep, i'm pretty they're sure they're a duo yeah and they murder it live what he does with those loop pedals playing guitar and bass and everything at the same time is like ridiculous but it, it sounds it, great it, i love them it's a it is amazing what you know artists that you can do with music with technology today and that's that's exactly what everything so you joke and said that i could see a lot of our you know, people watching <laughs> this going like yeah i could see that you know just vocalist and a drummer sure it makes sense <laughs> it's perfect sense <laughs> all right um is the current, I was going to say, so the, the lineup that you have today, was this the same lineup as when you got started for Fate Destroyed? No, I don't know many bands that still have like their first ever lineup still the <laughs> so same. Rare. That's like, that's super rare, um, especially when you're like a fledgling band. I think that once bands get like more established, they kind of tend to cling to the same lineup. But no, uh, Johnny is the only original quote, original member, myself and Johnny. He's my guitar player. Um, but I really couldn't be happier with our lineup now. It we haven't had a lot of member changes, but the ones that we have had have been for very good reason. And now we just are like this collection of killers <laughs> who like every single person who has been welcomed into the band family is like at a ridiculous skill level, um, maybe excluding me, but everybody else is really good. So <laughs> I'll sell yourself short. Uh, I, Cause I was gonna say, I, let's talk a little bit about your music. Cause I watched a couple of your videos and I was extremely Sorry. impressed with the sound that I heard and the style that you play. How, how would you define your music? Or would you define yourselves as metal? Or are you just more hard rock? Um, I don't know. These are like such boxy questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's hard to, who, what kind of artist, what kind of creative wants to put themselves in a box and say, I am this and only this and can be only this. I feel like Good that's point. super, I feel like that's super limiting. So, um, I mean, for some of our songs, we're definitely more hard rock. I would challenge you to find another hard rock band that throws down the guttural vocals like I do. <laughs> um, but no, so I think we're like a really good in-between mix of some parts of our songs are more hard rock, some parts of them are more metal, some things are more technical. And I think what's important is like as we evolve as a band and because we're still new in our inception since like 2018, we're still... We spent a long time really trying to like hone in on what our sound is and especially as our lineup changes and as we sort of develop into our own we really don't like we want to sort of define our own sound so we will always have aspects of metalcore 
or metal or hard rock or prog metal or hip hop or whatever in our music. Um, but I think like what would be most ideal would be to sort of pave our own way and kind of do our own thing, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that's the right, that's definitely the right thing to do in, in that aspect. Um, and like I said, yeah, it's, you we're, know, writing, we're just trying to write stuff that like we want to hear, you know, like, that makes that sense. like that, you know, um, not try to try to fit into any, any box, like, you know, like she said, so. It's, it's, it's more your, fan, you know, you, you, well, let me ask this. For, so obviously, you know, Cameron, for yourself, you, do you have a certain um, bands that have influenced, at least from the music that you guys are writing so far? Uh, I, well, for me personally, I have like all kinds of influences spanning a bunch of different, different genres and stuff, but I'm, I'm actually pretty new to this band. Um, I've, I've been in the band, what, maybe five, six months, something like that. But um, so I haven't really been involved with like the creative process or the writing process up until very recently. Okay. Um, and and the uh, I guess another thing we'll talk about is the EP. But um, but yeah, I'm, I'm helping put my inputs and two cents and making the drums for that and all that stuff. And it's been a pretty good experience so far. So. Okay. So uh, yeah. who does? I was gonna say who does most of your composing and writing? Uh, kind of all of us. Yeah, we all we all hold our own. There's not anyone that's like the designated songwriter. Um, I just, for the new EP that we're doing, it's been really nice. And again, I think this also comes with like member changes. You sort of change the way that you collaborate. When we wrote our album, pretty much ninety percent of the songs were written by our old drummer, who is a guitar player too. Um, and again, we talk about being limited or feeling like you're kind of in a box. And so, like with this EP we all get to bring to the table the things that are important to us and our own influences. So um, I don't really have a lot of inspirations from a vocal standpoint. Um, I think I think it's just, I feel like a lot of femme presenting people who uh, do sort of like a crossover of metal and clean, they tend to stick to sort of more of like an operatic singing in between. Mm -hmm. Like if you listen to bands like Nightwish, oh, um, love Nightwish, amazing, incredible. They are masters at what they do. Um, but if you look at bands like that, you you hear a lot of the stuff that's in between is like very beautiful and melodic and, and that kind of stuff. And we, um, ours is a, I think I feel like ours is a little bit different. So um, definitely influences in terms of like the music writing. We have some jet influences. Um, Trivium is a big influence for me. I like Trivium a lot, um, but it's just difficult because the bands that I listen to, I don't really think that we sound much like any of them. <laughs> okay, and, and that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, there's, there's nothing wrong with not, you know, sounding like the band that's influenced you. It's like, you're making your own, as you said, and, and focusing on what you guys want to sound like. So that's, that's perfectly fine. But it's funny you mentioned that because you're the second band I've interviewed who have said Trivium has been an influence in some way, shape or form. And they're playing Blue Ridge too. How ironic is that? <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, there's like 200 bands playing Blue Ridge, so I am not shocked. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I mean, incredible. It's I, I can't even begin to fathom the strategical logistical nightmare that putting on a festival this big could be. Like I, I don't understand. I don't understand yeah. how they did it. They pulled it off. Pulled it off, but I don't understand how they did it. That's yeah, crazy. I, I, I'm with you. I completely agree. And, and let's talk just briefly about Blue Ridge. Um, I want to get back to your music too. So how <laughs> did your band end up getting onto the lineup? Was it an application process, send a demo? Or how did that happen? Lily. Sorry, my dog just knocked over my... <laughs> Lily, can you not? Can you go lay literally anywhere else in the house? Thank you. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> She's like, Mom, let me lay on your tripod. <clears throat> Um, you know, dogs. Uh, so what is interesting is we actually submitted, uh, we saw a post by Emily or Talbar on some local metal group, um, uh, Facebook group, and they were looking for submissions. So we submitted an EPK um, and got on, but we actually got on to like the 2019 Blue Ridge, but because of COVID, it got held over and then held over again. Um, and so then now we're on this one. So it's it's kind of been like a really long time coming. When we first got on the festival, it was three stages, three days. Um, and then now it's like, I don't know, six stages and five days. And It's crazy. It's just absolutely it's, crazy. So, but, yeah. but that's the thing. You were a holdover from the prior. And unfortunately, because of COVID, that's had to get pushed. So 
yeah. understand. Yeah, you're not def- you're definitely not the first story of that I've I've heard either. So, but good to see that you're actually going to make it. So that's great to hear. Um, let's let's take a step back to the music though. So you've released an album, a full a full studio album, just recently. What's the what's the title of that? Cameron. Within these walls. <laughs> in these walls. Oh, I like it. I was, I was waiting for you to answer. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. Sorry. I don't, I don't know, yeah. The, know the name the of the album. silence. <laughs> I was like, hey, right, no. Okay, so what's interesting about the album name is uh, we actually had our fans choose the name of the album. So um, I wrote up like five or six different ideas, and we had this contest on our Facebook page, and we had like a voting contest, and the, and the person who chose the album, we like – let everybody write it out. Uh, everybody commented with the name that they wanted. And um, within these walls is actually not what I wanted to name the album. <laughs> but what the fans request, they get, right? It's one of those things yeah. like, you know, bef- you know, before you flip a coin, where you're like, oh, I'm going to flip a coin to see like heads this, tails that. But like by the time you flip it, you already know what yeah. you wanted it to be. Yeah. <laughs> but I actually, it actually worked out great. So I wanted to title it The Need That We Kill For, which is the single from the album, which you yeah. discussed earlier. Um, but actually within these walls ended up working out really well. Um, and a lot of people have made like this weird connection between it and being trapped inside for COVID. And honestly, I, I, it's not wrong. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> and, the, and the timing is, you know, almost, you know, timing's almost perfect in a sense for that. So, um, the album was released, what last, we talking about in June of 2021, just last month, May, end of May, May, end of May. Okay. Um, let's, let's talk about that single though, because yeah, the, um, the need that we kill for, I was like, Whoa, that was, that's a very impressive track. I love the video. I love number one. Um, the sound I love, the vocals are great. Tell, tell me a little bit more Thank about you. this. Song. So we'll definitely talk about that, but we should definitely talk about how we filmed the video because okay, it is, let's talk about an, that. And it's, a, it's an engineering masterpiece, right? We were not in the same state at any point during the year that we filmed that video, none of us. Um, we all we different also, states? different states, different videographers, different times. Okay, fill me in more then, <laughs> yeah, the rest of this. So we actually, so we shot that, that video and the video for this crown at, in green screen. But at the time, um, our guitar player, Roger was living in Colorado, um, which I'm glad, cause then we probably wouldn't met Cameron. But, uh, but he was living in Colorado and, um, we wanted to take heed of like the COVID restrictions, right? We weren't going to like go and interact with people. And then we were worried about the safety of ourselves. And this was like at the peak when COVID was really at its peak, when things had first shut down. Cause obviously we filmed stuff a long time before we can release it. Um, and so everyone was really concerned and worried about what it could mean and what it would be. So um, we had him hire a videographer and he went and filmed in a green screen studio in Colorado. I filmed at a studio in Culver City. Somebody else filmed in a studio in Hollywood. And so we basically had all of these raw pieces of footage that uh, the guy who directed it, Ron Thunderwood, um, put together in this video that actually is weirdly cohesive. Um, and it looks like we were all in the same place when we absolutely definitely were not. That's the second video we've done like that. Uh, the video before that for a song called Crave, which is one of our, if not, I think it's now our most popular song on Spotify. Um, we also filmed, but we filmed it like on, in like with cell phones because it was locked down and we couldn't see each other and we couldn't get a videographer. So we all just filmed our own parts and then blended it together in this weird black and white video and like the song took off. So that's cool. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, I'll have to check out Crave. I haven't seen that one yet, but I did watch, you know, the, the you know, we kill for it. I was just like, this is... I mean, it look, I will admit, you know, fans are going to go look at this. It does look like that. You're just all there, you know, yeah. together, <laughs> together at once. It's like, it's like that, nothing to me that right away that would make me jump out to say like, oh no, they're, they're in definitely in different rooms. No, he did a, did a fabulous job. So, so tell me about the song itself. Tell me a little bit about the, you know, the backing behind it in the story. So the funny thing about this song in particular is that the first time I wrote it, um, I hated it and there's actually two or three versions of the song that I completely scrap. But what the song is about on like its purest, most literal form is 
the reason I kind of had like this existential crisis. I know it's kind of, I had this existential crisis during COVID where, um, because everything was grounded, we couldn't do music anymore. I couldn't do anything artistic anymore because I do modeling. I do stuff with my car. So I, I couldn't be around my friend group. And I just started to really question like why I did music, right? Like, why am I, why am I doing this? And, you know, I was just feeling really frustrated. Like, is it worth it? Am I getting too old? Um, and so that's why the song repeats like, it talks about that hunger for success and learning how to measure your own success against other people. And it really is just a song about those superficial feelings of I need internet validation. I don't know why I'm doing this. Is this the feeling that I'm killing for? Is this what I'm seeking? Is this what's missing in my life? Um, and that is where the basically where the song came from. And it wasn't until I was able to write out those vocals that the song actually hit home because I was going to scrap the song. I wasn't going to use it. But then when I found the vocals that fit, I was like, no, this, this is not only it, this is the single. <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't because I, I think that message is very powerful. And I think a lot of people need to hear that um, because so many of us, you know, from, from all industries, you know, especially in music, struggled hard, you know, during that time frame. So I'm glad you did. That's it's a great song. We'll, we'll definitely link that into our article to show our, our fans there to uh, give it a read, give it a watch. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. absolutely a good tune. Absolutely a good tune. So what, tell me, Cameron, tell me some of your favorite singles that you've had off, you know, from the music that you've learned now joining the band. What are your favorite singles? Ooh, I want to know this too. <laughs> uh, God, you know, my, my favorite, out of, out of all the singles, um, probably the Need of the Week Kill For, super fun to play. I love the breakdown in it. And then, and then my set, but my favorite song to play like overall wasn't a single, but it's called Rather See You Dead off of the uh it's on the full length it's just like really bouncy and it's got a good tempo it's just and it's like, fun to play live we, and, and it's just like weirdly our the highest stream song on apple music even though like on spotify yeah. our spotify and apple music are not contiguous i guess android and apple people are very different yes we are <laughs> <laughs> I, I look at our spotify all the time and not our apple music or anything else but but yeah but yeah, I, I love playing that song. And it's just catchy. It's like really, it like gets stuck in your head by like the second chorus and stuff. It's cool. So All right. I like that song. All right. Francesca, do you have a favorite or two? Yes, I do have a favorite. And I feel like it is our, it is such an underrated song and only I love it. And it's funny because even when we play live, like it's one of the songs that I feel is like so powerful and like, especially cause I think it has our nastiest, dirtiest, like hard hitting guttural breakdown of any of our songs. But even when we play it live, people are just kind of, they just like look up at me and it's like, I just, I can see that it's just not there and it breaks my heart. But anyway, so my favorite song that we have put out up until the EP we're about to put out is a song called Art of Betrayal. Um, I think the reason that maybe it doesn't stick is because the choruses are very like I call it salad, which is like what are the exact like? I think it's because it's too fast. It's like a significantly higher tempo than the rest of the songs on the set. So maybe it's just like a different feel. I don't know. I, yeah. And then it, and then it even has like that halftime thing at the end, which is like super sick and musically yeah. cool. And oh, uh, anyway, but I think it's I think it's just like the chorus is too com commercial, like. If you're a person who listens to metal and you listen to that song, me as someone who listens to much heavier metal than I make, mm. I I would maybe turn it off before I got to the breakdown, but I love mm. it because the words mean a lot to me. Um, and the breakdown is just like dirt nasty. So yeah, that's my favorite song. It has like some of our fewest, it really doesn't have a lot of plays and it always breaks my heart because like our third most popular song is my least favorite song we've ever put out. And I really wanted to take it off of our Spotify, but like, I can't now because it's yeah. like, <laughs> it's like at 150,000 streams. And like, I no. want to, because I hate it. Yeah. You, have, you definitely can't do that. No, definitely can't do that. So it's the, say to one more time, the title was the art of betrayal. The art of the art of betrayal. The art of betrayal. All right. I'll, I'll give it a listen. I'll let you know. And, <laughs> I want to. I want to hear this because it's you know it's it's odd to me. What I, I find that very odd that you find you know you love a particular single that the fans just absolutely don't love, and it's yeah. I mean, it's it extremely strange. You know, everyone has their own taste, and you know, some things just click right away with fans, some don't. But it's just now I'm now I'm very curious to see why. I have I need to know. So I'll go I'll go listen to that and see what I love it. And then yeah, and then uh, we put out now from. 
I don't know. I have like, I have really mixed feelings about our, about our album and not in a bad way. I mean, kind of in a bad way, but kind of not in a bad way. Like, I think what was really difficult for us was that we actually started writing that album, like pretty much shortly after we became a band and it took us so long to finish it. But by the time we were done with it, we had already, I feel like we had progressed as musicians and like, we had already gotten our single for the, for the EP that's coming out later before the last album was done. Right. And it was like, we have come so far from that. And like, it's one of those things where like, I like it. It's good, but we're like so much better now. If that makes sense. It's yes. weird. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. I, and I think, you know, as musicians, you evolve. You know, you evolve your sound, you evolve your style, you evolve, you know, sometimes the way that a band plays together. Um, you know, you start to click, you know, in different means, like the more often you get. So it's not surprising to me for, it's not surprising to me to hear you say that where it's like, you know, this song, this is good, but it's not us at our best. You know, yes, there's more that's, that's the coming. Way to describe right? it, yeah, yeah, I completely, I can completely understand that. So let's, let's talk about the EP a little bit since, you know, you feel like this is more becoming what they destroyed really is you know, for people want to know. So um, when are we expecting to see that drop? We should be dropping it basically first week of September. So right as we're coming out to Blue Ridge, probably that Friday, maybe even. The timing. Um, <laughs> the timing. That was that was planned. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. If we get it finished, which we should. Cameron, I only have left to do the Slam Song, and then we're in the studio next Wednesday with Lily, so we're good. Okay, anyway, Close. not Slam Song you know the yeah, secrets the, demo whatever yeah anyway sorry sure. that's a sidebar conversation that's okay <laughs> so um what i think is i every musician i think feels or knows when they have that this is it mm -hmm. moment right i feel like i feel and i'm not comparing myself to like i don't know anyone famous i'm just saying that like i feel like when I feel, I'm trying to think of a good example now. I feel like when Led Zeppelin sat down in the studio, right? And we're not Led Zeppelin, obviously. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hear me out. Let me get to the end of it. When Led Zeppelin sat down in the studio and listened to No Quarter for the first time, the first time that they heard it, you know they all looked at each other and they were like, bro, we made this. And I really feel like that's how the CP is going to go for us. I think the most important part is that I feel like with our last album, especially being a fledgling band, especially our first album, being so easily influenced and, and again, sort of what that song talks about is like trying to chase success, right? And not really defining it for ourselves yet. I think a lot of our first album was emulation, right? Like we would listen to bands like Motionless and White or, or, or Trivium or Deftones or, or Ginger or In This Moment and try to make our own variation of what had already been done. And in a way that's really limiting as an artist, because again, you're setting yourself up in these boxes. You know, when you're asking yourself questions like, is this metalcore enough? Does this sound like a day to remember? Is this riff, you know, let's listen six times to this one part in this Motionless and White song. And is this sort of that same feel? I feel like that comparative analysis can be extremely limiting, but what's great about the EP is that we are all, number one, we have better band chemistry than we've ever had. Our lineup right now is incredible and solid and we all work super well together and we work really fast together, which is important. Um, and I feel like everybody on this album, instead of trying to emulate something, we're trying to do something completely new. Um, the single that's coming out for the album, it's called Death Signs in the Sky, kind of a long name, but, um, it actually features a, a rap artist on it. Okay. Um, it still has dirt nasty breakdowns and big open choruses. And so I guess what we're doing is we're experimenting. And I think this EP is going to be the first time that we actually get to have a glimpse of our sound. We had like full creative freedom over the EP. We have all like really been climbing together with it. Um, and it has a little bit of something for everyone. So it has a lot of rap and hip hop influences, but it has like dirt nasty breakdowns. And then we're writing one song uh, that we were just talking about, which is my first song that I'm doing no cleans at all. It's just straight gutturals and screams. Okay. Um, and so, you know, it's a four song EP, it's small, but 
I think it's going to make a really big impact. And I feel like this is like, as I'm listening to the progress of this EP, I really feel like I can just feel it. I feel like this is like, it, that's it. Like, it's going to be it. Like that is going to be what people connect with and people like way more than anything we've ever done. And I think that that comes because there's just authenticity and we're not chasing anything. We're just trying to do music. Like Cameron said, that we like, that sounds cool. So Cameron, something we want to hear. Yeah, I was going to say, so Cameron, give me your, give me your take on the EP from, from how do you look at it? Uh, I, I, I love it in the aspect that it's just so it's not, um, I mean, yeah, it has like influences from all over, like everything does, but there's nothing else that I can really like compare it to or think of anything, anything else that it sounds like. And that's like a really big thing for me. Plus it's also really catchy and fun to play. And it's not, um, it's not like over the top in any certain way, as far as like dr the drumming goes. And it's just like really, uh, it just feels very clean playing it. If that makes any sense. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just, I really like the new direction and the new sound. And I think it's, uh, I think it's going to, I think it's going to catch attention and be a little bit more memorable than, than the past music. As much as I like, you know, the music up until this point, I think this I agree. is, is going to be a little bit more memorable for, for, for new people. So. And, and this is, is this, this is the first album now that you're involved in creatively as well, correct? With, mm -hmm. with your so yeah. band. So, right. So yeah, the, full, the full length was well done long before I even, I even knew any of these guys. So. Um, so yeah, this is the first bit that I've had any involvement in, but, but like we'd always said, it's a very, very collaborative effort. There's a lot of, all, all of us have been pretty involved in it. So awesome. All right. Which so is we'll, great. <laughs> yeah, it is great. We'll, look, we'll definitely look forward to seeing that right before Blue Ridge Rock Festival. What a good, perfect timing for you guys. Um, yeah. So what happens now with the band after Blue Ridge or even before Blue Ridge? Are you on tour? Are you going out on the road and Blue Ridge is a stop along the way? So what's happening? So we are playing a show in Los Angeles, August 29th at the Whiskey, which is a Sunday, the Whiskey Go Go, which is like a rite of passage. Cameron hasn't played that there yet. It is a rite of passage place. <laughs> I haven't played there. Yeah, I'm so, I'm I've so played excited. There like, I've played there like five months. Not, not trying to chew my horn, chew, chew, but I've played there a lot. So it's not like, I'm excited because we're playing my friend's birthday party and I love doing that for my friends because like what a better birthday gift than like Ever rehearsing since I, and playing a show. <laughs> ever since I even knew who Motley Crue was when I was like seven years old, I knew what the whiskey was. It's like I'm so excited to play the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, Jim Morrison's awesome. signature. Jim Morrison signature is upstairs on a table at the whiskey. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. So we're doing that, and then um, actually the two weekends after, or the we two weekends after Blue Ridge, we are playing Rebel Rock, um, in Orlando. You are. I yeah. did not know this. So we That's are awesome. so. We're playing the we're playing taco the free party. party, which yeah, the taco party, which yeah. is like Jose Jose Mangan's thing. And yep. we actually got like a really good time slot. And I'm excited because we get to play with POD. I think they're headlining that yep, night. They are that yeah. night. Mm -hmm. And so that's really exciting uh for us. And then the next week we leave for our first national tour. Um, we're gonna be gone all of October and we are touring with a band called Vampires Everywhere. I know them. Mm -hmm. And then a band uh, a band called Assuming We Survive. Okay. And then uh, a band that's coming for a few select dates is called Bunny and the Bear. I've heard the of yeah, the I know Bunny and the Bear. That's cool. That's a good yeah, lineup. We're on for like a week of the tour or something like that, which is cool. Yeah, that is cool. That's a, that's a solid lineup to be on. That sounds like fun. Good for you guys. Awesome. Yeah. So we so you have right. So we're gonna do show in LA. You're gonna hit Blue Ridge. Then you got Rebel Rock two weeks later, and then back on then on a national tour. And is that October first? October first. All right, you sound busy. <laughs> That's good. Oh, we're putting, we're putting on an album, an EP, two festivals, and a tour. And really, we can't even say a full year because we really started all this shit like in March. Right. So <laughs> it's yeah. been a lot. I think no, we're. I think lot. we're. I think we're trying to get to the UK next year. Mm. But I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but it seems like it probably will happen for sometime in the spring, maybe. But that would be cool. Right. Yeah. Weirdly or not weirdly or maybe weirdly, I'm not really sure. Uh, uh, if you look at our if you look at our listening audience, most uh, we're like really weirdly big in Russia and like Germany. So I definitely I know it's not the UK, but I definitely want to go over and tour Europe and like go see what that's about because it's LA shows are weird because I feel like everybody just has like this apathetic aloof like attitude of like I don't care because it's not cool to care about anything. <laughs> 
Um, but every time I've toured in other bands or whatever, and you like go to the Midwest or like everywhere else, people just throw the F down. And I am so excited for us to go play in places where people just throw the F down. <laughs> When, when you get to Blue Ridge, I'm sure, I mean, like like I said, from I'm very interactive in that Facebook group um, for the fan zone, and it's just there, I, I will, I joke you not, they're family, you know, it's like people, yeah. who, and this is the mm-hmm. thing I love about festivals personally, it's that people who don't necessarily know each other, who meet people for the first time, like I've met tons of people, like friend, like people I've become friends with, you know, because of festivals. And it's just, you can't ask for anything more. And that group is definitely very family oriented, you know, of people willing to help each other, people willing to ask questions. They will, you, you're looking for fans that are going to want to throw, they'll throw. Trust me, you'll get, you'll get what you're looking for. You will with that group, I'm sure. I'm mm. sure. So, um, and we never talked about this. You are, you're based at, your band is based out of Los Angeles, correct? Yes. yes. All right. All right. So that's, so, so the whiskey is hometown for you in that, in that aspect. Mm. All right. Yeah, that's great. All right, so let's. So now that we know what you're doing tour wise, music wise, let's talk a little bit outside of music. Um, so, what do you like to do when you're not writing, you know, touring, playing? I'm just making hand gestures. I'm awkward. That's okay. <laughs> so, Francesca, tell know. me first. What do you What do you like to do for you know hobbies outside of music? Try not to be awkward. No, I'm kidding. I do that all the time. Okay, no. Um, I am an avid car enthusiast. Um. So I have like project cars and I go out to the racetrack over here called Irwindale and I race my cars and I do a lot, I'm involved, like heavily involved in the local car community. And so we do like meetups and charity drives. And so like, that's something that's really important to me um, is working on my cars. I also have a Harley Davidson. I love to ride motorcycles. And so I do that to pretty much anything that like, doesn't. Yeah. So, (laughs) and pretty much anything that costs me money, really cars, motorcycles, Music, all of it's very expensive. <laughs> yes, it is. So, t- so tell um, me about your cars. What do you have? Um, so I have a 2019 Ford Fiesta ST, but but it is big turbo and it is like 400 horsepower, uh, and it's like 2,400 pounds. So it's a little monster. Um, and then I have and then I have a 92 Miata. Oh. that I'm building as a, that I'm building as a drift car. Um, okay. So that's going to be what I do with that. And then those are my two project cars for now. I had a little 96 EK hatch, but I traded that for the Miata. So All right. now I have a Miata. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Cameron, what about you? What do you like to do when you're not doing music stuff? Um, pretty much my number my number one hobby is drums my number two hobby is probably drums my, num- my <laughs> what number my number hiking hobby, what about hiking my number three hobby i in my spare time i like to play drums <laughs> no, no, he, does. Like, he no. plays drums all the time it's <laughs> awesome he constantly has content for us i'm like always like poking at people in my band i'm like you guys play guitar right you should record it sometime like video <laughs> so we can post it and meanwhile Cameron's over here like here's how you warm up in the morning with your with your flamadiddles i didn't say that right but you know what i mean and i'm like yes get it show them how it's done <laughs> that's hilarious I'm always trying to do stuff like that but, but yeah no, I, do, I do love i do love hiking a lot and like exercising you know i like go i hike like multiple times a week um okay. i haven't been to it as much because i kind of messed my feet up I, went, I was going a little hard there for a while but uh, and it's like 110 degrees outside right now. Yeah. Too. Yeah. The, the other day I had this like weird um thing in my ankle, like in my shoe that wasn't coming undone. So I just had to like ditch my shoes for the rest of the hike. So I did like, like half of a mile downhill, like barefoot. And that messed my feet up quite a bit. So I'm trying to, trying to chill for a minute. That's hard. That's uh, hardcore hiking though. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I like to get after it. I like being in the heat. I don't know. I'm weird. I just like, <laughs> I love it. Like working hard. Like, I don't know. That's but, why uh, he chose, that's why he chose drums. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. I tell you. So, and I was going to ask you, since Francesca brought it up, are you, are you big on, you know, doing recordings of like either playthroughs and stuff, or even like little drum riffs that, you know, I don't want to say riffs, drum beats that you do, and then putting it out like on YouTube or Facebook and such? that a big thing for you? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. Nor- like before I moved, I had a little studio set up that I would uh, like. I was always recording myself and doing videos and stuff like that. Kind of in the process of working on finding a place to uh, to like have my kit and set up all of my studio gear and all that stuff. 
So when I get back to that, I'll be, I'll be doing that like all the time. But, but yeah, that was like a big hobby of mine. Like that's a big, that was like the biggest thing I did over COVID was like learn how to like uh, edit video and like record myself and mix and that and like master my drums and stuff like that. And yeah, I, I would obsess over that, really nerded out over that for a while. So I guess, I guess you can, it's still related to drums, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's not nothing wrong with that. Hobby that, I, that I really love getting into. So It's a good use of time too when, you know, when everyone was in lockdown. So yeah, yeah it, was, it was just like an endless rabbit hole. It's like, well, I need to, I need good video. I need to learn about lighting. I need to learn about white balance right. and, and clipping and color editing and color correcting. And it just, it was just became like a whole wormhole of things that I got yes. to learn. So <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. That is awesome. So I'm, I'm going to ask you, because I, I always like to notice things in backgrounds about stuff. So Cameron, mm -hmm. behind you on your wall, you have an alien poster. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Wait, oh, wait. Look at that. Love the wait. tattoo too. There you go. So, I told I you we're all band, we're band soulmates. You don't understand. Right, there you go. <laughs> that to be. Yeah, I was gonna say, Cameron, tell me what what's your what's your love for Alien? Why why is that your favorite movie? Well, it was one of the first horror movies I, I, I've ever seen. Like, and I, uh, it was like playing in the theater in my hometown like it was like you know how like the theater will show an old movie every now and then like they did one of that for alien and i was like nine or ten years old and my dad's like you gotta see this you gotta go see this movie <laughs> your dad and, did you see alien? Ten? Yeah, and, 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 that and, yeah. and that scene where they took the dude's helmet off and he has the, the face hugger just like on his face and then the thing just grips around his neck tighter it's just like that like terrified me as a child <laughs> i don't know it's just like i don't know i just i just love it like i like that uh, like, i like all the hr <laughs> I love all the H.R. Geiger influence and just like the imagery and all of that too. It's just, it's just a sick ass movie. It is. Absolutely yeah. is. I was going to say, Francesca, apparently you like it too because show that tattoo up again. My answer is way less cool than his. Actually, I'm going to give you a joke answer and then a real answer, but it's upside down. But That's okay. It's, that's yeah. pretty. It's very nice art. Yeah, they do it. Good job. So, so tell me your joke answer. Sigourney Weaver in a little white muscle tank. That's why I like Alien. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I love I love John I love John Carpenter films. I love sci-fi. I love oh Lily. Sorry, my dog's being cute. <laughs> um, and I also like the HR Giger aesthetic and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think for me, like I was just like on this big '80s horror movie kick for like a long time when I was younger. Um, and I really appreciated, especially in the early movies, that they didn't use like a lot of CGI. I really liked mm -hmm. like the puppeteer work, and I thought um, that that made it a lot more real. And I was like super into movies like that, like Videodrome and like weird kitschy side uh, prosthetics and stuff. Yeah, just like Practical weird. Stuff. Just, yeah, and um, it's, I think it's also one of the few movies or series that like I didn't like. I didn't hate any of the sequels that came out. Like some of them are better than others, obviously, but there's not one of the Alien movies that I'm like, nah, this is like trash. Oh, oh yeah, I'll I'll give you one. Alien Three, that was trash. Not trash. <laughs> I thought it was trash. I saw I saw it for free and I said I want my money back, but that's just my opinion. So that's just me. <laughs> but, but the rest of them were fine. I love the rest. So all good. All right, great. Thanks for sharing all that. Um, so you know, right as we're you know we covered everything, I think we're going to cover there. So what last words do you have for our fans, viewers, the people who are going to read? Um, what's on your mind about anything about the band, the tour, the upcoming EP? Um, Cameron, I'll start with you. What do you have for us? Uh, I'm excited to get out and tour and play shows again. Fucking throw down. <laughs> Cheers. Get out right. on the road and play, play some music. Okay. Francesca, what about you? Hmm. Definitely come throw down with us at Blue Ridge. I know we are on the rising talent stage, which is exciting. I'm excited to meet other bands and you'll never know what kind of amazing quality music you will find going to the side stages. I know everybody wants to see the big headliners. I want to see the big headliners, but all those bands started as small bands at some point too. And you can be one of the cool kids and be like, oh, I've been listening to them since they, you know, were small. So go check out the side stages everybody treat each other with kindness of course and we cannot wait to meet you guys and show you what we're going to bring to the table and i personally checked out almost every band that's playing blue ridge and they're all good they're all worse they all are so all good. good all of them there's not a, like a dud in the whole lineup so all right 
And I, and I will absolutely emphasize and agree with you hundred percent, you know, just always make sure that you know, if you go to a festival, go always check out the side stages because sometimes, you know, there are bands that are there that will blow your mind of something you never knew. And it's one of the things I was talking about before what I love about getting the chance to do this interview. So thank you for taking the time to do it is that it's introducing even me to new music that I've never heard of. And I've seen and listened to so many of these bands already going, why have I not heard of them before? So <laughs> It's it's crazy. So I'm I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you so much. We had no, this was a lot of fun. it was a lot of fun. It was so nice talking to you, and I look forward to meeting you at Blue Ridge. And we are so excited. So thank yeah. You. So before we wrap up, what is the day that Fate Destroyed is playing? Friday. On Friday. All right. So come see Fate Destroyed on Friday. That's September the 10th. The Blue Ridge Rock Festival runs from September the 9th on Thursday to September the 12th on Sunday. Um, come see their set, come buy their merch, come say hello to them. And, and I always say this because I've been saying it in every other interview and I truly mean this, you know, please help support these bands by buying something for them, a sticker, a t-shirt, an album, an EP, which they both will have at Blue Ridge into nudge, nudge. Um, <laughs> cause that's how you support these bands. And this is how they continue to do what they do. So if you love them and you want them to continue making music, please do something to help support them in that way. So Cameron and Francesca, thank you for taking the time tonight. Thank I greatly so appreciate much. it. It was great talking to you. And hopefully we'll see you over at the Blue Ridge Rock Festival. Yes, we'll see you yeah. soon. Thank you. All Bye. Right.